Good morning, sunshines. Does anyone else get hot at night? But I have the fan and the AC on, so my shoulders are cold because I don't always want to be like up to my neck in the blankets. So I wear like a sweatshirt, but in like tiny shorts on the bottom because I don't want my legs and bottom have to be hot. As soon as a shoulder peeks out and you're not wearing anything on your shoulders, I'm like, oh my God, I'm cold. This combo's been, been hidden. I went grocery shopping yesterday. This was one of my random picks. I don't even drink matcha very often. I like matcha if it's not chalky, but I figured since this was already like mixed in, it's green tea with almond milk. So I feel like we'll probably get some caffeine out of it. Probably, I hope. 35 milligrams of caffeine. That's not very much at all. Okay, so we'll just get a blob of caffeine out of it, but I want to try and see how it was. So I'm gonna taste test it for you. I can't open it. Oh God, nobody panic. <laughs> what? Okay. No big deal, you know. I'm just really strong. We'll put it in a cutie cup. Some ice in it. That made a very strange noise to me, I don't know. Not as satisfying as when you see the swirls of matcha and almond milk, but I'm not gonna try to judge it too harshly right away. I'm gonna give it a fair try. It tastes like grass. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. It tastes exactly like grass. I know I like some matchas. This is not it for me. Am I disappointed? I had to buy a very large thing of it to discover that. You know what happens. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Not for me. I also tried my hair curl thing again, but half of it, big chunk of it came out in the night. So that's why this isn't curly, but some of the back stuff is, and this still is. Bit of a fail on my part. We live and we learn. Okay, so when there was Prime Day, I got a bunch of stuff on Amazon, obviously. And this is one of my purchases. It's like a GoV back TV backlight thing. And I want to put it on, but my TV is currently just propped up against the wall because I just never got around to installing it. I got a Task Rabbit today to come by and do that for me. Someone who's got like 500 TV mounting jobs and all five stars. So I'm like, okay, this guy's gonna do great. I'll let you know how that goes and what it looks like after. Should be stunning, stunning. He's here doing the mount. I'm excited. Squish is still terrified of men ever since the movers stepped on him that one time. So it's very sad, but I'm also glad that he's not underneath his feet, you know, like tripping him and stuff. So that's good. The cats are both hiding in here with me. It's okay, baby. 20 minutes later. He just finished. Here she is. It all actually looks so high to me now because I'm so used to it being right on this little console table just propped up. Also, he said it was, cr it looks crooked almost. It's like perfectly level. You can see it's like level with everything, but this trim, I guess, is crooked, which is unfortunate, but I'm like, what am I supposed, what am I gonna do about it, you know? It's just odd because the trim must be crooked on top of the brick because this looks even with the brick. It looks fine. I want to put my glowy stuff around it so it's cool. Okay, so what's crazy is I didn't know this. You, it has this little camera that you plug into a thing after you put the strip, the light strip all the way around. And so the camera is picking up whatever's on the screen and matching it. So it's not like a Wi-Fi connection or anything. It's just showing... I didn't know that. I don't know if that's how they all work or if that's just how this one works, but it's pretty cool. I'm into it. I don't know what this show is, but it looked like it would be colorful so I could show you guys how it worked, but very cool. Today's video, we have such a cute sponsor. Uh, today's vlog is sponsored by Blue Land. Blue Land is a wonderful, it's very aesthetically pleasing brand that provides eco-friendly products. I love making more sustainable choices in my life. If I find something that's convenient and sustainable, I will always choose it, especially if it's really cute as well. So I do really love Blue Land's packaging and how they store all their sustainable, refillable products. You can do a subscription service with them. However much you need, you can order as much or as little as you need. Super customizable, super convenient, so you never have to actually think about ordering these things. They will come right to you when you need them. I love that because I will avoid getting something that I need until the last possible second, and then I will continue to forget that one thing that I need. We just love a refillable, subscribable service, especially for something that you can't avoid not having. You have to have your laundry detergent, your hand soap, your toilet cleaner, etc. The Blue Land products 
that I got to try were the laundry tablets, which smell amazing and work great. Highly recommend. And I also tried the foamy hand soap, which is just a tab that you put in. They're really cute bottling and it comes out foamy and perfect and amazing. And I am such a big fan. Highly recommend giving Blue Land products a try. I do have a special code just for viewers of my channel in this video, of course. It'll be 15% off of your first kit with the link down in my description box. So make sure that you give them a try. Make some more sustainable choices in your life. It'll make you feel feel good, you know? That little hit of, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> We're all out here trying, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's continue the vloggy vlog. Murphy soap voices. Okay, this is embarrassing, but I was at yoga yesterday. Was it yesterday? I don't even know. Maybe the day before yesterday. And my yoga mat smelled so bad. And it's because I tried to wash it the other day and I think it was wet for too long or something and it got mildewy. But that was a hard hour to go through when I was like, oh my gosh, I hope no one else can smell this freaking mad. But I washed it again, I can't tell. I mean, it definitely doesn't smell like it did. I poured vinegar on it because vinegar is like good for counteracting smells and I poured a lot of Dawn dish soap on it. <laughs> and I just scrubbed it and I hosed it. And I left it in the sun. I think it's good now. I think we're good. I also ordered a second yoga mat just in case because I was like, maybe, maybe this one's just not good for high yoga. It's a weird texture. I don't know if you can tell. It's like soft almost, but I like it because it's grippy. It feels good for yoga, but yeah, I might, I might need a different one for high yoga. I don't know. Squish, why are you laying on it? You helping? Sunshines. When I tell you this summer has been such a, a hot mess express. I debated how much of this I was going to share because it is deeply personal. But I feel like if I had heard more stories like this, I wouldn't have felt as alone in the situation, as confused. I feel like it is so personal and that's why people don't share. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with not sharing. But I'm in a place where I don't think it hurts I don't think it will hurt me to share besides the fact that it's just like a deeply vulnerable topic. But I think in general, it will help more than it hurts, hopefully. <laughs> Who knows, but I'm pretty sure. Let's start with all of the things that have gone wrong, which is fine because that means things are just gonna start going up, right? In July, July 14th to be exact, because I remember the day, that was movie, Hunt and I, we're having a bit of tension. We kept bickering. It just felt like we weren't on the same page. It felt like I felt that he wasn't prioritizing me enough and he felt that he was going out of his way to prioritize me. So those two things were kind of like conflicting with each other, whatever. And he broke up with me July 14th, <sighs> which was stressful. Ironically, I put up a YouTube video that day and I was in a premiere that day and I had to just play cool because I didn't feel like talking about it. I had some stuff that, <laughs> some footage, <laughs> more ragey stuff, sad stuff that I had recorded, but I opted against it. I was like, let's not post this while I'm still like in the heat of the moment. And it was, it sucked. I didn't, I didn't want to break up, but I also saw like reasons maybe why again i thought it was too early to just call it kind of weird but whatever it was what it was a week later i check my uh my period tracking app and it's like you're four days late and i've never been late on my period before i am a weird i don't know ever since i got off birth control i am perfectly on schedule i always start the day I'm going to start maybe the night before or then like mid after midnight the next day or something but it's always like that time I'm never I never stray that far so me being four days late was kind of suspicious I had never even seen my period app at like say that before I don't know it was just odd so I bought some pregnancy tests they're trying to stress me out today I swear <laughs> I bought some pregnancy tests. Um, and I went home and I tried them. And I did four different kinds <laughs> because just wanted to be sure, you know? And uh, they were all positive. 
that was not something that I was anticipating finding out a week after my boyfriend broke up with me. I gave myself a breather. What I immediately did, okay, I'll be honest, what I immediately, my instinctual response at this point was I popped on PlannedParenthood.com and I scheduled an appointment to get rid of this. That was my instinct. I did it immediately. I scheduled it for like, I think it was, this was a sad Friday or Saturday. I scheduled it for the following Tuesday. And that was just a panic response. I was like, oh my gosh, I get, what? It's not like I ran to do it right that second. That was just my instinctual response, whatever. So I'm talking to Hunt and I tell him uh, he's gonna come over. And I don't tell him what it's for. I'm pretty sure he thinks it's a hookup, <laughs> but who doesn't hook up with their ex, right? So he's coming over and I have to give him this very unexpected news. So he walks into the house this is later that day, or maybe it was the following day. I don't remember. Is this all, the time was weird during this, this time period. Hunt comes in, he's like, oh, I gotta pee. And he like runs in, runs to the bathroom and I'm sitting on the kitchen counter when he comes out and I have all four tests lying out right next to me. <laughs> and, and my foot's like shaking. I'm so nervous. I'm, I'm like, I can't even breathe. And he, it's like, what, what's wrong? Like, what, are you okay? What's, what's up? And I point and then he turns, he looks over, he sees the tests and he like goes over to them and he's, oh my, oh my gosh. I don't even remember what he said. Something, some kind of exclamatory remark. And then he just came over and he just hugged me and he was like, I'm here. I got you. We got this. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And he just like gave me a lot of comfort and a big hug and it like felt really good and it meant a lot. And then, and this was not, his response was not what I anticipated because he hugged me and he was like, whatever you wanna do, I support you. I will be there with you 100% through it. He didn't even hesitate to be like, I will sign up for this kid's life basically. And I, in my head, the way that I thought it was going to go was he was going to be like, oh, you're going to get rid of it, right? Like, that's what I just thought in my head. And I think that's why I panic scheduled the appointment, blah, blah, blah. We talk for a couple hours about it. We're going over pros and cons, this and that, what we could or could not do or should or shouldn't do, whatever. Just kind of, I guess, toying with the idea of being parents which is a crazy thing to think of. But on the one side, I was like, I am, I'm 34 years old. I'm not getting any younger. And I, I'm financially stable enough. Like I could take care of a child. This isn't like I got knocked up at 17 and I'm broke and have no options. You know what I mean? So it was definitely something to consider. So I canceled my appointment and I was like, I found out really, really early. It was like, I barely had missed my period. So I was like, I'm gonna give myself two weeks to think about this and to really, to just not make a rash decision about it or anything. And Hunt was super supportive, super kind, very much like, he was later that week sending me baby articles and things and I'm like, stop, <laughs> like, what are you doing? But I was just, again, toying with the idea in my head. Part of me was like, I can technically, I know I can do this, but then, Another part of me was like, I don't know that I want to raise a kid with someone that I'm not like in a secure relationship with. Because it wasn't like we were like, let's get back together right now, you know? It was like, this is something we could do maybe, whatever. So long story short, it's the longest week of my life because I'm sitting here with this looming thought in my brain of, am I going to have a child? And I made an appointment at Planned Parenthood to go in just for like a pregnancy test and a checkup, right? Mm -hmm. Just to like triple, quadruple confirm, like they say yes, it's definitely that's what it is. And see kind of what my options were, I guess. It's a week later. I'm trying to tell this in series of events so it makes sense, the most sense. It's a week later and I wake up that morning and I'm bleeding and I'm like, oh. I don't think that's good. Um, I Google it and it's like some bleeding is, 
is possible during pregnancy. It's okay, you don't have to panic yet. But luckily I have my appointment that day to go in to see the doctor anyway. So I go in, they have me pee in a cup. They're like, yes, you're pregnant. And I'm like, okay, I figured. Then I'm telling the doctor that I'm bleeding and she's like, oh, that could be nothing. It could just be some, a little bit of bleeding. It could be a miscarriage. It could be an ectopic pregnancy because she said, she asked me if there's any tissue in the blood. I said, no. To rule out an ectopic, I don't know. She wanted to do an exam on me. So I had to do, I got my blood drawn through my finger, through my elbow. She did a transvaginal ultrasound on me, which is where they do an ultrasound, but it's not in the outside of your stomach. They put something all the way up you to look around in there. Um, and then she did an exam on me, a swab in my mouth, a swab in my cervix. Um, I had, I went through the works because an ectopic pregnancy is when the egg is fertilized and it's in like your fallopian tube or outside of the uterus, I guess. And if it bursts, something can happen, it, it'll kill you. You can't have an ectopic pregnancy. So she was very much like, we need to keep an eye on this. When she did the exam, she didn't see any tissue in the blood. So she was like, I don't, I don't see this as a miscarriage yet. Come back in two days and we'll test you again and see what it is. <sighs> so I kept bleeding, it did not stop. It was not spotting. And whatever day it was, the next day, or it might've been two days later because my appointment was two days later. I think it was the same day as my follow-up appointment. I don't know. I might be getting the time skewed up a little bit because this was, it was just a lot. Um, but I, I went to the bathroom and I checked and there was, um, I don't know if this is too much. It, was, it looked like a, like a jellyfish on my pad. And I knew that that was it. That was, that I lost it. Oh, it's still kind of sad to think about now and it's been a couple weeks. Um, I wanted to wait until I wasn't feeling emotional about it and then I was gonna record the video. That's weird, I still am. Okay, so I knew that was that. I ended up, it was after I got the test because they did the second blood test and then the results for that don't come back right away to check your HCG levels and see if they've risen or fallen or whatever. And I kind of got, I feel like I got the news and I saw that almost at the same time. It was like within the same hour or something of each other. I don't know. <sighs> so that was very sad, even though it, it was weird. I felt weird to be so sad over it because I wasn't even sure I wanted to keep the baby, you know? It was still up in the air about it, but I, and I don't know if it was, I don't think it was hormones because I'm so sad about it now. So, it was just a sad experience. It was, it was only five weeks. According to my little app thing, it was the size of a sesame seed. You know, it was literally nothing. But yeah, I went through that and that was very, I don't know, I've never gone through a pregnancy scare. I've never experienced a miscarriage. I've never had a, I've never had a pregnancy. I've been on birth control again for like, I was on it for 13 years or something, 13, 14 years. And I only just recently got off. And this is like the first year, I guess, that I've been like more sexually active or whatever. So that is what happened. I have told almost no one about this. So it's weird to now share it on YouTube. But I just feel like I'm, I felt so weird. I, especially like the day of the miscarriage. I called my mom. I called a couple friends or whatever. And I looked up a lot of stuff online, of course, like, what did I do wrong? Um, and I, it's very common. And I should have realized that because I know they're always like, don't tell anyone until you're 12 weeks, you know? And I wasn't by any means. I literally told like three people. And that was just like, should I keep the baby? <laughs> but I, uh, I didn't know it was like a, quite a common experience. And I, again, I should have realize that through context clues of like, don't tell anyone until 12 weeks because those are the 12 weeks that it's most common to lose a baby during pregnancy, I guess. 
But that had never happened to me before and that was scary and hard and it was very emotionally like just draining, especially right at, like there was just a lot of emotions. It was right after like a breakup where I was already feeling kind of emotional and trying to like detach myself from the breakup and uh, it was weird. But uh, during that time period, Hunt and I talked a lot and we are still talking. We're not like officially back together or anything, but we're spending time together and I, I think we're on track to be together again, which is honestly very personal and not something I even need to share, but I figure it's worth noting. But yes, that was my July, <laughs> right on. It was sad stuff and I, I, I wanna validate the fact that I feel sad over something that I didn't even know that I wanted. And it was only five weeks and I only knew for like a week, you know, it was only something, I was taking <laughs> prenatal vitamins though. Like I was just, I was, just in case, I don't know. Um, and it's not something, again, that I would try for by any means, and I'll be safer moving forward. Yeah. Pull out method doesn't work, ladies. Go figure. <laughs> I know that's, I know, I know. I should be smarter. I know. But it is what it is. And I will be smarter moving forward. Silly, silly goose. Okay, well, that was my July. During this uh, breakup period, I planned a trip to Tahoe with my girls. I booked the Airbnb, I planned it, I made sure everyone had the same days. I was like, I need this, I need a trip, I need something to look forward to that doesn't revolve around a man or anything. So I planned this trip to Tahoe, and I never plan things, I'm not a planner. I'm a, I'm a rallier, I will go along, I will be your girl when we're there, but I just don't, I'm just, it's not my strong point, my strong suit was not planning. So me planning this was kind of a big deal. And, sir, I'm telling a story. In the scheme of things, this isn't as big of a deal as the last story, but end of the day, the girls get come over. Liz flies from across the country, from Michigan. Comes over, Miranda gets here that morning. We all set out, we're going to Tahoe. It's a nine hour drive. It's not fun, it's a very long drive. We make it 11 hours because we stop a lot, we have to pee, we need snacks. We're hanging out, we're laughing, whatever. It was a fine, it was a good road trip. We get to Tahoe, to our cabin, to our beautiful cabin that I didn't even film a house tour of because we get there quite late at night, it's dark. Wake up in the morning, I have the most raging fever of my life. I am sweating, I feel so bad, so ill. I cannot think, I can't move. It, it's just, it was awful, so, so bad. And I was like, my first thought was just, I have COVID, like I know it because I've had it once before, way back when, when it was first, like not first, I don't know, it was like 2021 that I got it, maybe 2022, I don't remember. But I remember having it and it was awful. And that's how I felt. So uh, the girls weren't awake yet. This was like six in the morning. Then I woke up and I felt like this. And I Instacarted a, or DoorDash or whatever it was, a COVID test and some DayQuil and NyQuil. <laughs> and then got it, took the test. I was positive. I was like, oh my gosh. Not only am I here, drove nine hours to be here, but now I, I'm probably gonna get my friends sick. And I felt really bad about that. Which I will say, I don't think either of them got as sick as I did now that it's been a little bit since then. So I don't think I did get them super sick. I think they just got a little mild dose of it, which I'm so grateful for because we were sharing so many food and drinks on the way up there and I don't, I feel, I felt so bad. Long story short, I booked that cabin in Tahoe, it was super cute. I did not leave the cabin once the whole time. I stayed in my little nook and I tried not to infect everything and I just rotted and I slept. I mostly just slept. It was absolutely awful. 10 out of 10, do not recommend getting home. It was awful, but I did start feeling better towards the last day uh, Like a little bit better enough to you know watch Netflix and hang out and and they made that they did not make me feel bad Liz and Miranda were So sweet and kind and nurturing and perfect And I'm so glad that they were there to experience that with me and I didn't want to leave like I'd already paid for my cat sitter and the and the cabin and everything so I was like whatever either way I'm just gonna be sitting here rotting sleeping. I'll just stay here and then I told them, I was like, please go, please go have dinner, please go on a little hike, please do something, please go see the, the, the lake, because I'm not going to. So yeah, I didn't get to do anything that trip. And then we drove back nine hours uh, after, as soon as I started to feel a little better, which was perfect timing. <laughs> and then I came back and now, uh, yeah. I started feeling bad after I got back though, honestly. It was, it was like two or three days of like raging fever, which was awful. And then about seven days of like congestion, just feeling like awful are not great, you know? But yeah, I'm feeling much better now. I have the tiniest bit of congestion still, but other than that, I'm fine. 
and yeah, we're back on track. But summer kicked my ass and I don't recommend that for anyone. It was not fun. But I figure I've earned some good experiences now, some positivity, some, some niceness to come out of this. You know, like that arrow, you pull it back and it's gotta shoot forward, right? That's, that's I'm manifesting that, okay? Um, so that's my summer recap. Love that for me. Fall's gonna be amazing. Autumn and winter are just gonna be my seasons. I have still gotten, I've gotten a lot of beach time and I've had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs this summer. I'm not complaining by any means. I'm just noting that, you know, there were a few larger negative events that were not my favorite. <laughs> and that's that, we, we move on. We acknowledge our feelings, respect our feelings, and move forward where we can, you know? Yeah, that's my, I don't wanna call it tea. It doesn't really seem like tea, I don't know. That's my, that's my rundown, my summer recap, as you will. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Not enjoyed it, I don't know. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you will feel less alone if you've experienced it or maybe if it's something that ever pops up in your future, you'll be like, oh, Nikki went through that too. And she's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I just, you know, I'm just sharing. Sharing to share. Love you guys. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for watching this video. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you'd like to, or subscribe, do that stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Love you lots. Talk to you guys later. Ta ta for now. Goodbye. <laughs>